In our first 3JS shader tutorial, we learned about vertex and fragment shaders and eventually wrote some simple shaders in GLSL, the graphics library shading language which looks sort of like C. In the second one, we dove deeper into uniform and varying variables and learned how to create this wavy box-like shader. But in both cases, we wrote shaders in string literals, which means no syntax highlighting, no formatting, and no auto suggestions. Writing code like this is a really painful process. It's almost as bad as doing coding interviews in a Google Doc. So in this video, we're going to learn how to properly write shaders in VS Code with the WebGL shader extension. Let's jump right in. So writing shaders in text like this is not fun. So what we're going to want to do is go to the extensions section of our VS Code and search for WebGLSL. Here you'll see the WebGLSL editor and you can install it. Once you install it, you can start writing GLSL files. It will automatically update the syntax for you. So here I've created a vertex and fragment shader. And basically what I've done is I've taken this code, copied it, and since this is the vertex shader, I put it in the a underscore vertex dot GLSL file. So if I click that file, you'll see that the code is right over here. And I'm going to take this fragment shader code and put it inside of a underscore fragment dot GLSL. So here we've got our fragment shader code and you can just sort of play around with it here and you'll see that it's a lot easier to write GLSL code because you can see everything that is available. For example, if I press command space, you can see all the possible functions that you can call inside of a GLSL file. You got float, you got floor, you got sign, you got cosine, you know, you got all the functions that are available inside of GLSL. Now, the main problem with writing code in a GLSL file format is that we can't simply import it into our JavaScript project. We need to install an NPM package that can make this conversion for us in our build system. This process can be different based on what framework you set up your project with. I know some of you might be working with Webpack or Babel, but in this video, we'll go over the GLSL V plugin because this tutorial, as well as all my other 2JS tutorials, are built with Vite. The plugin that we're going to want to install is the VGLSL plugin. Allow us to import GLSL files into our JavaScript code like a simple JS import. Uh, and this is something that we wouldn't have been able to do because again, this code is not JavaScript, right? JavaScript won't know how to deal with .glsl files. So in order to install this extension, we're going to first want to npm install the vite-plugin-glsl module and save it to our dev folder. You're also going to want to update your vite.js config. Here, what you want to do is import the GLSL plugin. Right below React, we can also import the GLSL plugin. And that's basically all you have to do. What this does is it takes all the GLSL files inside of our project and makes it easy for us to import into our React.js files. So if I go to app.jsx, you can see here that now I can import the GLSL code into my project. Project. Let's go all the way down and comment out this code because this is what was running up until now. But what we can instead do is run this code. So as you can see, instead of writing all of this code inside of my JavaScript file, I am sort of putting this in a GLSL file so that it's a lot more readable. And you're probably going to want to create your own like shader folder and put all your shaders in there. But this is just sort of a demo purpose. And as you can see, we have the same code running, but now we've sort of refactored it so that we can work with GLSL files. So yeah, now you can easily write GLSL shaders for 3JS in VS Code. If you made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.